Pad Love with Pat's Two Cents, here to share a scripture, followed by Pat's Two Cents. You know that? Yeah, you know, <laughs> you know the drill. Romans chapter 1, starting at verse 18 through the end. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. Dangerous territory. Okay, let me get back to the word. Because that when they, because that which may be known of God is manifest in them, for God hath showed it unto them. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Because that when they knew God, they glorified him not mm, as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations and their foolish hearts were darkened. Mm -hmm. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools and changed the glory of the, of the uncorruptible God into an image made like to corruptible man and to birds and four-footed beasts and creeping things. Wherefore, God also gave them up to uncleanness through the lust of their own hearts, to dishonor their own bodies between themselves, who changed the truth of God into a lie and worshiped and served the, cre the creature more than the creator who was blessed forever. Amen. For this cause, God gave them up unto vile affections. For even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. And likewise also the men, leaving the natural use of the woman, burned in their lust one towards another, men with men, working that which is unseemly, and receiving in themselves that recompense of their error, which was meat. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient. Being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignity, whispering, backbiting, haters of God, despiteful, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, without understanding, covenant breakers, without natural affection, implacable, unmerciful, who knowing the judgment of God, that they which commit such things are worthy of death, not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. Now, I'm going to read a definition. And I want you to hear, because this is what I'm dealing with. Narcissism. Narcissism is excessive or erotic interest in one self and one's physical appearance. Extreme psychologically, extreme selfishness with a grandiose view of one's own talents and a craving for admiration as characterizing a personality type. Psychoanalysis, self-centeredness, arising from failure to distinguish the self from external objects, either in very young babies or as a, f a feature of mental disorder. How many people nowadays 
suffer from narcissism. Listen, I met a man in church years ago, years, 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 years ago. He was a pastor. Now I want to share something with you. One thing I will not tolerate in my presence, I hate it with a passion. It, I call it a spirit of rape, the spirit of a rapist. You've got to be narcissistic to be able to rape. And there are people who rape other people's dignity. They rape them of their self-worth. Okay, now, a lot of abusers are like this. A lot of rapists and a lot of, of uh, women chases, let's just put it like that, or like this. They think they are God's gift to the world and they just cannot compute the the they can't fathom the idea that you may you may not be interested in them <laughs> well of course you're going to be interested i'm god's gift yeah anyway now what i want to share with you is this is where we have to be careful because sometimes we tend to start sliding in that direction and we don't get it but i'm going to share something i just spoke to my pastor's wife about it earlier this afternoon it was a story she never knew this about me but i met a pastor who well he met me he introduced himself to me and he seemed nice enough at that time my discernment level was not that high so i didn't pick up on the signals and he invited me over to his church making a real long story short he invited me over to his church to sing so I came and I sang several times he invited me, but he also started taking me out to dinner to discuss the things of God, the working of the church, the ministry, right? All right. Now, when it was all said and done and the dust settled, God had given me a dream. And in this dream, I was sitting across the table from this man who said, who was sitting there, excuse me, trying to convince me to become one of his wives. I'm like, what? <laughs> and his members or his, his entourage, so to speak, was sitting around the table in total agreement. Anyway, moving right along, I'm leaving out a lot of detail to get to the point. When it turned out, that this man, I mean, after I preached, God gave me uh, this, this vision. Oh, I have to tell you this detail. I'm sorry. There was an earthquake, and I got ready to go. And they said, oh, it's just a volcano. Now I think these people are really crazy for saying something like just the volcano. So I'm getting ready to go. And he starts trying to convince me once again. Every time he tried to convince me to become one of his wives, we had an earthquake. So I get up and I said, sorry, Charlie, I'll see y'all later. I got to go. I hop in my car. See, I'm not nice and polite when people get inappropriate. So I hop in my car and I'm taking off and I look behind me and nobody was coming out of that building and there were fiery cinders dripping down from the sky. And you could hear the rumble of the volcano getting ready to erupt. It was already shooting out sparks. I took off down that road. I woke up right from that moment. And instantly in my mind, I knew that God was telling me it was that church I was singing and finally preaching to. He had me preach there several times. Do you know every time he had me preach there? God wouldn't let me preach anything else but stuff like this, fornication, sexual sin, um, abomination, adultery, I mean, craziness. And I'm looking at this innocent group of people and I'm like, no way. But God told me to preach it. I did what I was told. In the dream, that, that gave me an alarm. I understood what God was saying. 
And then one of the women, the old women at the church, said she only went to that church to pray because the members were being led astray by a lustful pastor. She said there were hardly any skirts in that church he had not been under. And they were still sitting there. Now, what ended up happening afterwards was, later on through an encounter, uh, it came out after I shared my dream with this lady. She finally confessed that she was his wife, incognito. Yeah, in secret. Her baby was his baby, incognito. Kept on the down low while he was shacking with another woman. What? Is you crazy? I am not lying. You talk about a den of iniquity. So what ended up happening, makeup on my hand, what ended up happening was God used me to get her out of that church. And while I was getting her out of that church into another church, a spirit-filled church, God gave me a dream that the church had been shut down. And I went to the pastor to tell him, God let me know to tell him God was going to shut his church down. And he vehemently rejected what I said. It sounded ridiculous because God is merciful. And I said, okay, I told you. Can't say I didn't tell you. Somebody called me three months later. Girl, did you hear that church is padlocked? Nobody can get in it, not even the pastor. The government, the official, somebody came and shut that church down. See, God doesn't play. But when he turns you over to a reprobate mind, oh, you can, you can have at it. He'll let you do whatever you want to do. Because when you get the bill, leading all those souls astray, I have my elbow on the table, leaving all those souls astray, luring women, at the, at the expense of their souls, at the expense of their eternity? Oh, God hates that. Let me say this as a warning. Any of you, any of you who think the world revolves around you, any of you who are abusive to your wives or abusive to your kids, but you're a charming prince at church, and you walk around slithering, trying to see whose skirt can you slide up under. And you're walking around trying to see who can you fool? Who can you control? Who can you bring up under your domain? God has a bill for your behind. If you don't stop, if you don't repent, I am telling you, you're on dangerous territory. Because you're out there trying to lead souls astray. I've seen them since that man. And ever since that, I spot them a mile away. And when I spot them, I stay away from them. Because my soul hates that spirit that goes around seeking whom he may devour. And they're allowing Satan to use them to do it. Because they're so narcissistic. They get a, uh, an ego kick out of thinking that women are drooling over them. But they're in the pulpit preaching the word. Come on now. You really think God's okay with that. Either that or you really don't believe in God at all. And if you don't get your behind out of that pulpit and quit contaminating God's word, please. Now that's all I got to say about that. And the reason I'm so hot it's because I had an encounter during the last three months. And I am telling you, if this person keeps calling my number, I will stand up in the church if I have to. And if they get this message and see this video, this is your warning. Don't call my number anymore.
and anybody else who's out there chasing after tails, chasing after ego trips. You, if you're not chasing after the, their behind, I, I don't think he could be looking at me that way because I'm old enough to be his mama and I see it. But I'm telling you, there are women out there that men chase after if it's not for the sake of, of uh, an encounter. It is for the sake of feeding their ego and they need somebody that they can control and they're under their submit, they submit to them and they answer to them and they boss and lord over God's heritage. No, ain't nobody lording over me. But the Lord. And he doesn't even lord over his heritage. That's your warning. Whoever you are, you know who you are. Don't mess with me. I will expose you. And listen, those of you who are out there messing with people, male or female, leave these saints alone. Let them follow God. You want a following? You want a, uh, an entourage? You go out there and set yourself up a little kingdom. But you leave God out of it. 